Dear people of God, in the season of Advent, it is our responsibility and joy to prepare ourselves to hear once more the message of the angels, to go to Bethlehem and see the Son of God lying in a manger. Let us hear and heed in Holy Scripture the story of God's loving purpose from the time of our rebellion against Him until the glorious redemption brought to us by His holy child, Jesus. And let us look forward to the yearly remembrance of His birth with hymns and songs of praise. But first, let us pray for the needs of His whole world, for peace, for justice on earth, for the unity and mission of the church for which he died, and especially for this church in our country and in this city. And because he particularly loves them, let us remember in his name the poor and helpless, the cold, the hungry, and the oppressed, the, ch the sick and those who mourn, the lonely and unloved, the aged and little children, as well as all those who do not know and love the Lord Jesus Christ. Finally, let us remember before God his pure and lowly mother and that whole multitude which no one can number whose hope was in the word made flesh and with whom in Jesus we are one forevermore. Amen. The first reading is from Genesis 3, 1 through 15. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other wild animal that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God say, You shall not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the tree, fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said, You shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it, or you shall die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be more like God, knowing good and evil. 
So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened and they knew that they were naked and and they sewed fig trees together and made loincloths for themselves. They heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me the fruit from the tree, and and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent tricked me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you among all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head, and you will strike his heel. This morning's second reading comes from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz, saying, Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as Sheol or high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear then, O house of David, it is too little for you to weary mortals, that you weary my God also. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child and shall bear a son and shall call him Emmanuel. He shall eat curds and honey by the time he knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good.
Our third lesson comes from Isaiah. Comfort, oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All the people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers. The flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. Here ends the lesson. The fourth reading is from the fifth chapter of Micah. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth from me, one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, 
in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they shall live secure. For now he shall be great to the ends of the earth. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid. Mary, for you have found favor with God, and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her.
The sixth lesson comes from Luke. In those days, a decree went out from the Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee, in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone all around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I'm bringing you good news of a great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly... There was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem. And see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in a manger. When they saw this, they made known 
what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. Our eighth lesson is from the chapter of Matthew, from the book of Matthew, chapter 2. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and we have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, 
they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. from the Gospel according to John. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness. And the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him when he cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness, 
have we all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth have come through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen the Father. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart. He has made him known. Let us pray. Merciful God, who sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation, give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Wonderful to have you all here this morning. Just a couple of things to mention. One is that uh, if you have taken one of those cards for you know to buy a toy or a gift uh, that's going to be distributed, uh, please make sure you get it in by next Sunday because the, uh, a week from tomorrow, Monday morning, we're going to be taking those and delivering them. And so uh, please do make sure you get them in this week or certainly by next Sunday. The other item is if you're planning to buy a poinsettia uh, or poinsettia, you know, I realize raging debate there, uh, at any rate, uh, uh, for, to help to festoon the sanctuary for uh, Christmas Eve and Christmas Day and all, please do get that order into the office. Any other announcements to make this morning? Oh, at Allison Hill's house. We'll meet at Allison's house. Okay, 1 o'clock on the 15th. Okay. Thanks. I, I do want to make one uh, announcement, and that is to, to include in your prayers Plum Trent. Plum Trent, who we have prayed for here diligently now for five years, uh, is it last done with her battle. Uh, 
Saturday morning, she went to be with the Lord. Her passing was swift, and we are grateful for that. And so uh, do keep her in your prayers as she is enfolded in the Lord's arms, and keep her family as well, especially in your prayers. Let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us and offer it with Oh, my Lord. Well, you know, uh, we do need to, oh, gosh. Uh, Acolytes, can you help move the, it, it's time to move uh, Mary and Joseph, and uh, actually, we kind of need to move the wise men in. The, the, uh, we had, for those who aren't familiar with this, the Holy Family road trip, uh, you know, Joseph and Mary are not in the creche because, of course, it's not Christmas yet, and so we're advancing them window by window. And on the fourth Sunday of Advent, the Holy Family will be in that window. And then on Christmas Eve, they'll be in the crash. The wise men have only just gotten word. <clears throat> and so they are advancing by a longer route and are in the back window there. And will arrive for Epiphany. And a little, time, a little while later. Thank you, guys. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I've just been reminded, we do this every year. What's the problem? <laughs> <laughs> Let us present our tithes and our offerings unto the Lord. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the victory, and the majesty, for everything in heaven and on earth is yours. 
Yours, O Lord, is the kingdom, and you are exalted as head over all. All things come from you, O Lord. And no can be given The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me.
Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death. We proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him and being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection unto your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, blessed Thomas and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. gifts of God, for the people of God.
members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace. And grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May he whose second coming in power and great glory we await make you steadfast in hope. Steadfast in faith, joyful in hope, and constant in love. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. 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 